Hi guys, welcome to our skills video on marking out and using a datum point. Obviously marking in any kind of making, whether it's carpentry, metal work, or you know, plumbing, any area of making, accuracy is really, really important. The most important factor is that you're doing exactly what you need to do or what something that fits. So to do that today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to accurately mark out a uh, piece of wood to make into some different joints. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really basic tool, and this is literally the bread and butter of carpentry. Most important tool is your tri-square. Obviously, a tri-square is a, an angle measuring tool. It allows us to mark and measure and check things are 90 degrees. And this is what this is. This is a perfect 90 degree angle. So to do that, I'm going to use a piece of timber. This is bigger than the timber that you're likely to use in RMT, but obviously for the video purposes, it makes it much easier for you to see you know, what I'm doing. Okay, so... The first thing I'm gonna to do to find my data is I'm gonna find uh, a face and an edge, which is perfectly 90 degrees. It's what we call the face edge in carpentry. I'm gonna show you how to find it and how to mark it. So obviously I have my tri-square here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the light, so I've got the window in front of me. I'm gonna hold my tri-square up against the short edge, so the butt of the tri-square is gonna be here against the shorter edge, and then this slightly longer edge here, the face, is where the metal blade is gonna be. I'm gonna to check to see where it's the most accurate. Where is it the most 90 degrees, the most right angle? So I put on the edge and I slide down and then I move the square along the edge. So I've got a couple of gaps here, it's not quite 90. Spin it round and do the same thing. I'm looking for that flat face. So out of the two, this one's pretty good. It doesn't have any gaps on it at all. So therefore, compared to the other one, this edge here, where this face and this face meet, those are perfectly 90 degrees. Now that means that that is gonna be my datum. That's gonna be the edge I'm gonna mark from. It's gonna be the most accurate way of marking if I mark from this edge. So what I'm gonna do, you guys obviously are always gonna use a pencil, but for the video, you know, so you can see it clearer, I'm gonna use a black pen. So there's my edge. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this face is now gonna become my face edge, my accurate face. So what I do is I literally make a little squiggle like that. I mark it. Now, this apparently comes from Latin, uh, facio, which means face, obviously. Um, and it's supposed to be a little F, but it's just a little squiggle carpenters use to know which is, that's the most accurate face there. Now, I need to remember which is the edge that goes with this face. What is my face edge? So obviously I know it's this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist the timber and I'm gonna put a little arrow there. So I've marked my edge and I know this is the edge and the face that is the most accurate. That is 90 degrees. And now I can use this. And when I use my tri-square to mark anything, I'm always gonna start from that edge. That is my datum, my accurate point. So I will always put my tri-square against that edge and I know that everything's gonna be 90 degrees. So for example, let's have a look at marking a piece of timber. I'm gonna make this timber uh, mark it so I can make it slightly shorter. So this is what I do. I've got my timber here. I've marked my face edge with my arrow. I've marked my face there, my accurate face. So obviously, because this is the edge I'm marking from, my tri-square is gonna go up against it here. So let's just say I've already marked a line, a little squiggle, and that dot there, that is where I'm gonna be cutting from. So now what I do is I put my tri -square, I put my pen on the mark, or you use a pencil. I slide my square up and I'm making sure that my tri-square, the butt of the tri-square is touching the timber all the way along, because we know that if it's tight here, it's gonna give me 90 degrees here. And what I do is I mark across. Now that is my accurate mark, and I can mark all the way round now following that. So I twist it to this edge. Again, I put my pen on the mark I just made, or the edge of it, and I mark across. And I do the same thing on all my sides until I reach all the way around and because I've got a 90 degree square, I can't quite see that, let's remark that a little bit. You can see that because I did it accurately and I did it from this edge first, all my lines match all the way around. Now that means that it is nice and accurate and I'm gonna cut that piece of timber accurately at 90 degrees. Now let's say that I wanted to mark maybe a joint. So I'm gonna do a mortise hole and that is gonna be a hole which is gonna be somewhere here in the middle of my timber. Now, I'm marking just on this face. 
However, we know, as we said before, that this is my most accurate edge because there is my arrow. So wherever it is, it doesn't matter if it's on the complete other side of the piece of wood, I'm always gonna start from here. So let's say I'm gonna start marking my mortise hole. So I'm gonna get a tape measure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark on my edge where I'm gonna start that hole. So let's say I've cut this piece off, that's waste, so let's use our method of marking. I'm imagining that this has been cut off. So that's waste. So here's my, my edge again here. So I'm gonna mark from here and I'm gonna say that my mortise hole is gonna start 10 millimeters in. So I make a mark there at 10 millimeters, sorry, 100 millimeters. And it's gonna be, let's say, 40 millimeters wide. So what I might do is I might count back. So I'm gonna go 10, 20, 30, 40, and make another little dot. So all using my edge. Now all I have to do, as we sort of talked about before, is use my square. Obviously these marks you would be making are in pencil, so they're always sanded off or rubbed off. And this is the edge I actually want. So you see I've taken it from there and I've marked it around until this is the face that I actually want. But I always start on the accurate edge. So let's do the same thing. And I get there. Okay, so there's the kind of boundaries that my mortise is gonna go into. And you'll see the opposite to this joint, which is the tenon, which is what we um, are gonna cut in the sawing video, uh, sorry, the chiseling video, and you're gonna see how that's made. But now I've got my marks. Now, I'm gonna mark the shoulders, the edges of where this hole is gonna be cut into. Um, but to do that, we don't actually need our edge anymore because we have the edges here are gonna be accurate enough for us to do that. We only needed our accurate edge to mark across the piece of wood. Now I'm gonna be marking down. I can just do that from either edge. Now I'm gonna do it a really quick way, um, which is using what I call a finger gauge. So I'm just literally gonna use my finger here to mark my lines. Usually you would use a marking gauge. I'm just doing this for speed because of the video. And obviously that's, bit, that's being cut out. That is waste. So there is our waste. There we go, guys. We've looked at how to use a datum, and specifically when it comes to woodwork and carpentry, how to identify a face and a face edge with which to mark all the way around. So I hope this is super helpful. This is going to hopefully show you how to work accurately to be able to pass the marking and uh, measuring component of your carpentry skills test.